Aya, you look great today. Yeah, whatever. You're just saying that because you told Dan and now you feel bad that you didn't tell me to. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hey. Everyone's so shy. How do you guys view me on Zoom? Do you go in the gallery view or do you just look at yourself the whole time? Oh, my God. I definitely do gallery view. I would I would much rather see everybody than yeah. or like speaker when it flips. You know, what are you doing? I like to know what all the facial expressions are, even when you're not talking. So true. Hmm. Feels like a conversation more when you go in gallery view. It does. Especially you, Daniel, because you have a lot of great facial responses. My face says it all. Yeah, just like when I put you in that movie. My face does say it all. Yeah, you got laughs just from your facial reaction. I get laughs, man. You were funny. Yeah, no words needed. That was actually pretty entertaining. I liked that scene. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> cinematic genius, not by me. Can we talk about that plant background? Yeah. Behind you, what's going on? What's? Yeah, I thought it was a fake Zoom background, but it's it's real. Yeah, it's for real, man. Looks like you live in the jungle. Yeah. What is this? It's a plant wall, living living wall or a plant wall. And uh, they have one at the Budweiser Gardens. And turns out my friend built it. I was having a conversation with him about it the one time. And I said, how's about you put one of those in my house? And, uh, <laughs> and he did. <laughs> that's kind of how it happened. That's awesome. <laughs> that's really cool. I was going to say, I came to, uh, when I came back to Canada, what was it now, like over a month ago, two Three, months ago? Yeah, or... three months ago. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. First of all, it was great seeing you. I just want to say that. Had a great time seeing you both at the film festival, but also hanging out with you after, Daniel. I went over to your place and I saw that plant wall. My girlfriend was like amazed. I think she's like wanted a plant wall ever since. Yeah, it's quite. Um... But you have to like keep it up, right? You have to like water your wall. Yeah, there's there's upkeep <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it's not all it's not all roses over here on the plant wall side of things, but it could be if you plant some roses. Kind of reminds me of Tiger King a little bit. It's like Tiger King almost like you, you see the tiger and you're like kind of mesmerized a bit mm. and in love with it. Thankfully, this isn't as ethical as that. I never watched Tiger King. Wow. I missed it. Oh, Josh, you need to watch it. Yeah. I've heard for a long time. It's, pretty, it's yeah. pretty terrible. You really need to see it. Yeah. Did the pandemic really happen if you didn't watch Tiger King? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. My girlfriend didn't watch it. We watched it together. And, uh, now she lived through COVID. There you go. Right. Yeah. I like your plant wall better than I like Tiger King, if I can be honest. Yeah. Well, less animal cruelty. Yeah. A lot less. Yeah. Like zero animal cruelty. <laughs> zero. Yeah. That I'm aware of. That's true. There could be some yeah. insects in there living their worst life. Uh, there is a bit of an insect uh, genocide going on right now. <laughs> yeah. The, the fruit flies are, are not having fun. Yeah. Can I ask you guys before we get going, uh, how was your Hanukkah? It's good. Good. <laughs> that was the most lukewarm response. <laughs> I lit the candles, you know, went to went to a few parties, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Minor things. And um eat some latkes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got an LCBO gift card from my parents. That was my Hanukkah gift. There you go. Nice. Did you get eight gifts or just just one? No. I didn't even get one this year, actually. I don't think I got any. I'm just realizing that now. Thanks, Josh. Oh, I yeah. Jeez. You need to file a complaint. Yeah. Who do I feel like? Excuse me, God, why didn't I get the Hanukkah people, the Hanukkah police, yeah. <laughs> Hanukkah Santa Claus? Well, now I feel the urge to like get you a gift. Please don't. I'm fine. I don't need anything. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty poor. So, yeah, I know. How about you, Josh? How was your Hanukkah? My Hanukkah was I lit some candles, sang some songs, ate one latka at first, and then someone gave me some latkes after Hanukkah was over. And then I had a few more. I think French fries count as latkes too. I had a lot of French fries. I mean, if that's all you got. I mean, it's fried potatoes. Yeah. I uh, when I was at Josh's place, we uh, remember Josh when I was at your place, we had uh, we had McDonald's hash browns. For oh, that's yeah. what I was just about to say. My friend Ben Goldblatt was there, right? Yeah, you came over once when you came to Los Angeles. We celebrated Hanukkah together and we ate McDonald's fries as latkes. Yeah, I'm right, man. Or McDonald's hash browns. Yeah. Oh, see? Yeah. And I was definitely thinking of McDonald's fries too. They're so oily and delicious. It makes me think, it always makes me think of the miracle yeah. of the oil that lasted eight days, even during the year. Yeah, it's a really good latke. McDonald's is Hanukkah for sure. Yeah. And also because it doubles because the fries also look like candles. So mm, what if you, I just imagine like a menorah or a Hanukkah with eight, french fries mm -hmm. look yeah. it up on etsy baby it exists sure, it exists yeah. probably yeah. and then you can light them etsy or pinterest and it's like an m could be an m right Ooh. the mcdonald's <laughs> now we're just advertising for mcdonald's okay mcdonald's has now paid us for this episode yeah yeah their fries <laughs> are so good okay enough of that
Welcome back to Adulthood Friends. This is the discussion-based podcast where two former childhood acquaintances, now friends, discuss the things that... Adverb, Dan? An adverb for us? What's an adverb? (laughs) Yeah, I think we did this last night too. (laughs) It's a word that describes... A verb. Describes a verb, yeah. Like an L-Y word usually. Yeah, like really or cleanly or... Stupendously? Perfect. Stupendously. Yeah. Two former childhood acquaintances discuss the things that... Stupendously matter? Yeah. Okay, that kind of makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Stupendously is your adverb of the week. Oh, that was stressful. I know, right? (laughs) And I'm Maya. I'm Josh. (laughs) Today we have a special guest who you just heard. Yeah. And that's our old friend, Daniel Botner, who's our second repeat guest second repeat guest yeah yeah uh on the podcast and it's nice to have him back him and his plant wall yeah episode 32 yeah episode 32 it's got to be a special number somewhere you guys are pumping them out there holy shit yeah. yeah oh you know what 32 is how old we are 32 is how old we are yeah not for much longer all of us are january birthdays so <laughs> yeah. we're all gonna be not 32 soon that makes us very special i think that's our only connection <laughs> yeah that is one of our few connections oh so sad um, and today, for episode 32, we're going to be talking about conspiracy theories. So are there any conspiracy theories that you believe in? Why do people believe in conspiracy theories? Or what leads to conspiratorial thinking? And at what point do conspiracy theories become dangerous? So we'll touch on a few of those, maybe talk about a few of the more popular conspiracy theories, mm. which are maybe just theories. Maybe they're not conspiracies. Ooh. All right, <laughs> shall we get into it? Anything, anything you guys want to add to that before we get into it? I threw this out there. Oh, my God. Okay, let's get into it. (laughs) And we're back. Oh, so good to be back. It is good. Well, you're our special guest today. Dan, any conspiracy theories you believe in (laughs) that I guess you wouldn't consider conspiracy theories? Yeah. (laughs) No, you guys sent me the links and I didn't look at them. So I don't know what. But I'm sure there's some that I believe in. Yeah. Because like Reddit always has like a thing like once a year that's like, what are some conspiracy theories that are actually true? Mm. I mean, you're a big flat earther, right? Big, yeah. <laughs> always have been. Yeah. There's actually a show, uh, Inside Job. It's like an animated show that's kind of new on Netflix. And the premise is that all those conspiracy theories that you've heard are actually true. Like the world is run by like a shadow cabal and... There is like a whole lizard, bunch of lizard people that are very powerful in the world. And that's why Paul Red doesn't age. He's a lizard person. So much sense. Just all these jokes. And they have like all these conspiracy theories that are actually true. But even they make fun of the flat earthers as like (laughs) a joke that one of the guys who founded this like dark cabal or like runs it. He made this as a joke to the other guy saying, like, I can get people to believe anything, like, no matter how stupid. And that was the flat earth conspiracy that he (laughs) threw out there. So that's got to be one of the dumber ones. But yeah, I watched a show once. I I don't remember what show it was, but it was probably some sort of like monster hunting show with like vampires and werewolves. And then a character was like, oh, my God. Like all this stuff is real. And then they were like, so Bigfoot's real? I'm like, oh my God, no. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. People will pick one that like makes sense to them. And then the other one's like, no. I don't know if that was the exact thing, but it was that kind of joke. I told you my favorite show of all time, Stargate SG-1, is basically basically built off a, I don't know, does it count as a conspiracy theory? The idea that the pyramids were actually built by aliens. Oh, nice. And then it branches from there. Yeah. That's like the whole oh, they're actually by aliens. And then it uses like otherwise scientific, you know, storylines, but builds off a conspiracy theory. Yeah. I mean, that's one of those conspiracy theories that kind of like it's harmless and it's kind of, it makes potential sense. Like it's kind of crazy that we have pyramids. What about all those people that died making the pyramids? Is it harmless to them? Good point. Yeah. They put in all that work. Well, they're already dead. So I don't think they did it on purpose. I don't think they were or like, I don't think they memory. were. Cost of doing business. <laughs> I don't think they were like proud of their work. They were like, I am a slave who was forced to do this. Like, wasn't that like our people back in ancient yeah, Egypt? I guess, yeah. Yes. Wasn't it our ancestors? Aren't we like defiling the memory of our own people when you say that? Well, I don't know that there's pride behind building something as a slave. Like <laughs> we were forced to build those. It's not like. I don't think it was the Jews who did it. I don't think they believed no. that. No, 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 no. I don't know what the timeline is. Yeah. You know, what's crazy about the pyramids. So in between us and Cleopatra is 2000 years, right? Mm hmm. In between Cleopatra and the pyramids is another 2,000 years. So the the pyramids to her were ancient. Oh, that's interesting. That is interesting. You know, this could have been a Passover episode too, but we'll have to settle for a a Hanukkah one. (laughs) It's all connected. Oh my God, did you say it's all connected? I did, yeah. It's like a conspiracy. 
that's totally yeah oh my god i mean i think that's part of why like a lot of what the conspiracy theories do is give people a way to see connections between everything right like yeah it's almost like a i don't want to people are inclined to see patterns and everything we're inclined to see patterns it's kind of the way that religion gives people some sense of the world sometimes i mean those are two different things but like oh my god is religion a conspiracy theory we should ask that question later we can ask it right now i mean i have a better term for religion it's okay i haven't come up with it but it's a, a legacy cult a legacy mm, cult. Yeah. A cult that lasted long enough that it turned into a religion. <laughs> That's great. Right? Do you remember who termed that? Who coined that? I saw it on Reddit. I see everything on Reddit. I love Reddit so Just much. When in doubt, assume it's Reddit for me. Yeah. Aya, right, what do you believe in? What yeah. kind of conspiracies? Do you believe in any? Um, well, I was looking through that list. One of them said that Prince Charles is a vampire. Makes sense. Yeah. Because it was like one, he's like related to Vlad the Impaler, and two, he's related. <laughs> something he has some kind of yeah, some kind of genetic skin condition where he can't be. A... Yeah, prove that he's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like he's not not a vampire. Come on, guys. Like <laughs> yeah, but they're like sensitive to sunlight. His family. Or yeah, exactly. Right? Like come on, man, you're a vampire. You look like it. Uh-huh. And there was another one saying that like Frozen, the movie was put out with like that name to cover up for or like to disrupt the algorithm when people are looking for like Disney, the guy like Walt Disney well, freezing he was himself frozen. like because yeah, he apparently froze himself or he Cryogenic. cryogenically froze himself. So now anytime someone tries to search for Disney Frozen, they're just going to find the movie and not anything about him being frozen, which I just think is smart. Like that's just that makes sense. That's just genius. That makes a lot of sense. So I don't know that that's a conspiracy theory. I think that's just someone's good idea. Yeah, but what's the harm in looking up whether or not he's been cryogenically frozen? Bad public. I don't know. Yeah, I also didn't really understand why that was such an issue for Disney. Like, why do they care so much? That would just make him seem cooler. No, no pun intended. Ugh. Come on, that was a good pun. I no, I don't think so. Mortified. (laughs) I disagree. I kept wondering, did Daniel get the pun, or did he just also not think it's funny at all? I'm I'm just watching from the outside. Oh, all right. (laughs) From the forest. I wanted some backup. Be here with us. No, you don't need to (laughs) laugh at my. You don't need backup on that. You need to encourage that behavior. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, I think we've established puns are only good if they're cute names for pets or cutesy names for coffee. Uh huh coffee places or tea places Fair. and by we i mean me it's very aya thinking right there yeah yeah you can go back to me actually i do have a conspiracy theory that i think is true okay Ooh. it involves trump have you heard the trump conspiracy theory that he had a golden shower in russia <laughs> in russia that's yeah what, that's what they have on him is that a conspiracy <laughs> i also yeah that seems likely or that he's like deeply indebted to them and that's why he was like so pro-russia like there's got to be something there. Trump being deeply indebted to somebody is not a conspiracy in itself because he's deeply in debt. Yeah. It's been shown to be true. But was he act doing political favors because of that being indebted? Like that's the... It's so possible that it so almost doesn't possible. feel like you should be able to call it a... At which point is something so possible that it's not really a conspiracy theory, but just a theory, you know? Just like a likely theory. Yeah. What is the difference between theory and conspiracy theory? I don't know. Well, conspiracy is there's an element of group of people conspiring oh, okay. to cover something up. So if Trump had done that, but there's like a whole group of people covering up, if he just like himself kind of didn't tell somebody, it's not really a conspiracy, right? Mm. But I think it usually involves like a coordinated effort to cover up the truth about something. Right. Yeah, I think coordinated effort is that's part of it, too, because like even some of the ones that were on one of those lists, like the thing about Disney being like that seems that's kind of on the line of whether or not that's a conspiracy theory. Yeah. I don't even know if like Prince Charles being a vampire is really a conspiracy theory, just like a thing that people think might be true. That <laughs> I... Well, it depends. Like, is the royal family <laughs> covering it up? Then it's a conspiracy. Theory, right. 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 And they're bringing him little people to bring him blood. And it's actually everyone thinks he likes red wine, but actually blood. Oh. what? I don't know. I'm just saying. No, it just makes so much sense now. Yeah. Right? But for yeah. some reason, it still doesn't make the royal family any more interesting to me. Yeah, I, I care very little. They could all be vampires, but like, I still don't care about you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it's, for the best. What about the classic Roswell? Mm. You guys all know the UFO conspiracy. Yeah. Technically speaking, I think the truth and a lot of people still believe right that it was aliens that crashed and the government covered that up and it was a flying saucer and everything but from what i've heard is the truth is that technically there was a conspiracy and in fact there was a coordinated effort it was a cover-up yeah the government coordinated effort to cover up something but likely not aliens right it was from what i understand some sort of cold war spy stuff i heard it might be some sort of like military balloon thing Oh, because, you know, based on what I heard on that episode of Futurama, it was actually the spaceship that 
crash there when they traveled in time. Futurama is a good source of true information. So I think that episode won like a something, whatever TV episodes can win. Emmys? Uh. Emmy. Yeah, that episode won like an Emmy. So take that. There you go. That must be true then. It's definitely true. You ever find it funny that like all the UFO stories are based in the United States? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And all the movies too. People elsewhere have real problems. Yeah, like you don't see like a UFO in Zimbabwe, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but in the movies too, all the aliens always attack America. Yeah. They just go right for the U.S. Yeah. I, I'm sure there's there's a good reason, you know. I'd go for the U.S. Yeah, it speaks to like how selfish they are. Like, oh, <laughs> if there's a global event, it's going to involve us, you know. Like, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, very full of themselves. Although, to be honest, if I was going to destroy a place first and I were an alien. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. I was going to say that and I was like, I shouldn't say that. Yeah, but I was, I well, I was saying on... I was like. I shouldn't I can always say depend it. on Aya to say it, so that's okay. <laughs> oh, no. uh, but if you ask me what if I, there's a conspiracy I believe in, it's in that sense. Like, yeah, there's government cover-ups of things, mm. but I don't believe the most extreme. People always take them to like ridiculous extremes to unbelievable coordination between people that is so unlikely, right? Yeah, I think a lot of the problems with some conspiracy theories, especially the bigger ones, is that it assumes a level of competence in people yes. that doesn't exist. Yeah. Like on on that high level or on like yeah. people are like, oh, everybody, it's so well thought out. It's like, no, it's not. Have you yeah. met people? Because people are not capable of that. People yeah. are just driven by their own little selfish things. It's more likely that people are so incompetent that all of the stuff is happening. Yeah. And you would rather believe that it's a bunch of people who have planned this out really well because they're so yeah. smart than to believe that the people running the world are so incompetent, right? Like In a way, it's a way of othering people still. I know it sounds kind of weird to kind of bring it back to what we were talking about last week, but you're believing that these people who are in charge are so different from you mm. that they're capable of something so different from you in that way. Yeah, like, that's a good way of putting it. Like yeah. incompetence is usually probably what's driving this stuff. Like the 9-11 conspiracies. I don't know if you guys have looked into all this. There's, I know yeah. still a bunch of people who believe really? believe all that. Against, oh, yeah. My brother, for example, he totally believes. Oh, man. I feel like you know a lot of people who believe in in like a lot of different conspiracy theories, Josh. I I do. Yeah. (laughs) I'm in L.A., though. You know, you You associate with very strange people. Well, you have people who believe in astrology. I feel like that lends itself easily to conspiracy theories. Astrology itself is like a conspiracy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Or of a cult. Cult's conspiracy theory. But yeah. Yeah. But like the 9-11 thing, it's so interesting. Like how how could you even start planning for that like so that's and, the thing. and making it so that everybody yeah. is so secretive about it like yeah. how has no one in like a high position been like guys I actually can't sleep at night because there's so much guilt yeah. exactly like, and this is how we did it you know like how is like you would need at least a thousand of those people yeah and not one of them to break they've shown like statistically it actually becomes less and less likely to the point of like impossible the more people need to be involved for something right, like that to be right, possible. Right. so they've shown like i can't remember what the number is there's like a certain number let's say like past 25 people people can't keep a secret or something like that there's like some sort of actual statistical number there Mm -hmm. so you're telling me the bush administration managed to coordinate this crazy plan to get these terrorists from another country to hijack these planes and say it was them and specifically crash into two towers in new york and they would have to plant all these bombs so they would fall in exactly the right way just so they could say they had a reason to go fight another country to get oil Mm -hmm. It's like you guys have heard of Occam's razor, right? Yeah, the most likely explanation is usually the simplest one. Is that? Yeah, yeah. This is so convoluted. Like, why would anybody plan something that convoluted? So many things could go wrong. Mm. Like, at any given point, that plan could have fallen apart. Yeah. Also, can I just point out that the first time that you said the Bush administration, the computer made Bush go, so it was like the administration conspiracy Ooh. i think it might be a conspiracy yeah. yeah oh shit dan knows what i'm talking about here <laughs> yeah so just i just wanted to point that out for you but and our listeners that I, someone I, is listening in and trying to they are listening to us right now so just keep that in mind yeah, guys keep it in mind i get our tinfoil hats out keep it in mind when you say that if if you were a <laughs> alien in the first place you would <laughs> you would attack as the u.s <laughs> but going back to that point actually aya that you're making when someone like is telling you a conspiracy 
they're like, so like, oh, I'm so in the know about like, you know, and, and they kind of feel like on a high horse almost like. Because they went down a rabbit hole of all this quote unquote research. Yeah, I did my research. Yeah, they're like 9-11. My brother used to go into this. I remember he was all into the zeitgeist movement. You guys remember this? Do you know what I'm talking about, Daniel? I've only heard the name. I don't even know what it means, but like, yeah. There was like a, it's called the zeitgeist movement and there was like a movie and stuff. My brother was so into this. The funniest thing is that, again, the zeitgeist thing was the guy made this like documentary showing how all these different things are linked and it looked like totally sourced. And I remember like pressing on all these sources to like disprove what my brother was believing in. And yeah, they were all like bullshit. Like they were wrong or they were twisted. They're terrible. Or they weren't even there. But my brother was using this. I just want to say though, there's a friend of mine here who dated the guy who made the Zeitgeist movie. Amazing. So, I mean, her her beliefs, I think, have, have changed on this now. But at the time, we were working on like a music video together. And she was telling me about Zeitgeist. And I'm like, Oh, my God, that's just bullshit. And she's like, I'm sorry, if you can't get on board with Zeitgeist, I don't know if we can make this video together. And I'm like, what? Whoa, why? Where did this come from? Yeah. And then she tells me she's dating that guy. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I'm like, I still think it's bullshit, though. But then we started talking about it more. And she tried to explain how like, he didn't, it was more of an art project. And it kind of blew up. And so I call it my brother. I remember telling him like, this whole thing you believe in, I, I've now met the guy, by the way. I've met the guy who made this thing. Yeah. And I can tell you for sure now, it's bullshit. <laughs> but the guy believes in it. He believes in his Well, own. here's the thing. I don't, I don't really know. Mm-hmm. But she kept saying, look, the first one was kind of whatever. But you got to watch numbers two and three. That's where this stuff is at. I'm like, if I don't like part one, I'm not going to watch part two and three. Okay? That's not how it works. I mean, sometimes it's good just to be able to say, yeah, I watched them and they suck too. Yeah, you <laughs> how know? much bullshit can you watch in a row? It's probably like eight <laughs> hours each, right? They're like, ridiculous. Oh, God, yeah. But it would go into, of course, and it, there was a lot of anti-Semitic stuff in there too, which is weird. because like, There she, always is, isn't there? My friend, she's Jewish, right? My brother, he's Jewish, but he's like trying to tell me all these conspiracies about how the Jews are behind stuff. And I'm like, dude, you're, you're Jewish. <laughs> Do you know what bothers me about that is like, if the Jews are behind everything, why haven't we been invited to that? Yeah, where's my bank? I want my own bank. Yeah, like I want to be invited to this like dark cabal of yeah. whatever Jews running the world. Yeah. So, am I not good enough for you guys? So I have to change my name to Botner Rothschild. Sign me up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. They're like, no, it's only the elite <laughs> rich Jews. It's like, oh, oh that's bullshit. Well, we'll never yeah. be elite rich Jews if they don't let us in. Exactly. No, but they call them the globalists nowadays. Oh. Mm. Yeah, to like hide their anti-Semitism. It's right. It's just... We should get into like the protocols of the elders of Zion shortly. But I just wanted to say, so I remember bringing up to my brother, like, I'm like, this is bullshit. And he's trying to tell me how 9-11 is a conspiracy theory. And he's trying to explain, do you guys hear this before? How this is Daniel? Of course. Yeah, I'm not gonna, <laughs> of gonna course, call him out. But... <laughs> no, of course. Of course it was him. He's trying to explain, you guys heard the whole like steel or whatever it is can only melt at a certain temperature. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, and this fuel and jet burns. fuel can't fuel melt can't... that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it that. sounded like science and you look it up and technically it can't melt at that temperature. So it sounds realistic. And I remember coming back to my brother and being like, Okay, you're right. It can't melt at this temperature but it can bend, yeah, warp. <laughs> it can collapse, it can warp and collapse. Yeah, it's not like someone was lighting a jet fuel match at it and being like, I wonder how long this will take to melt. Like it crashed into it. Come on, guys. Like, that like a plane take- crashed into a building. Like who knows what's going to happen? Anyway, people still have strong beliefs about that, but it's, I think they've now debunked a lot of these kind of so-called scientific claims. It doesn't matter though. People who really believe in those things don't care about yeah. the debunking. Like it's kind of like, yeah. like what Dan it's was Q-Anon. saying. About- QAnon is totally debunked. Oh my- God, we gotta you get know, into yeah. And it doesn't matter. It'll never matter. Like yeah. the idea of people, I liked what you said, like they're on their high horse about like how they know more. And it, it's mm-hmm. true. They'll be like anything that you bring yeah. to them. That's like logic or science. They'll be like, you're just believing what they want you to believe. Right. Yeah. There's really and then no they have a whole to... treasure trove of other things that like they can just fling shit against the wall, basically, until something sticks. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I recently I think I shared this article with you at one point. I right? it was a scientific article. They found that people who believe in astrology. I'm sorry for anybody who's listening who believes in astrology. But... I think we've already lost those. <laughs> <laughs> this is a scientific. I'm sorry. Don't blame me. All right? I'm just the messenger. <laughs> the article says people who believe in astrology tend to be less intelligent and more narcissistic. <laughs> and I think that's probably makes the same sense for conspiracy theory believers in a sense, right? Because like you said, it's that high horse thing. It's more about me, me, me. It's like I have all the answers. I figured it out. I did my research and everyone likes to feel like that detective who figured something else out that nobody knows. Hey guys, guess what? Everything you think is wrong. Yeah. yeah. Earth is actually flat. The moon landing was faked. 
People love that. They do. There's something intellectually satisfying about feeling like you understand the patterns Mm -hmm. in the world. So the thing is, you can do that. You can get to understand the patterns by, you know, learning real science. Yeah, but that takes hard work. Yeah, they don't want to do the hard work. Like you actually have to put a lot of effort into that. It's not just And it's boring. It's boring. It's not as interesting. Yeah, Nothing fits together so beautifully as it does in a conspiracy, in a well-oiled conspiracy. Yes, it's perfect. It feels like a puzzle coming together, right? Right. And the thing is, the truth is we don't have all the answers to things. And that makes people uncomfortable. People don't like Mm -hmm. the feeling of the unknown. That's probably religion is an aspect of that for people. They need to have answers. So when something comes along with an answer, it feels like a puzzle that all fit together. They'll take that over. Eh, We don't really know why that happened. Yeah, it's hard to go over. Like there's so much uncertainty. Uh, It's like part of our storytelling, you know, like we love Mm -hmm. to tell story. Like that's like part of human evolution is like storytelling and like our ability to communicate with each other and like to express ideas is like through our storytelling. Yeah, and that's how people are connecting with each other too now. So obviously like a bad side effect is, you know, conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. It's probably just a side effect of like what we're wired for. That's true. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. The fact that we want to do that, I feel like there's like a good way, a good direction we can take that instinct to like do real research and find out more about the world or we can do it like in a bad way. I mean, that instinct is used for like most of the great things that humans have done is because of that kind of storytelling drive, right? Like, yeah, I I shouldn't say most of the great things, but like, yeah, you're right. It's kind of the two sides of the same coin. It's It's that curiosity. It's that search for answers. Of course, if you think about it, then like conspiracy theorists and people who believe so strongly in that, it's almost like the one step away from being brilliant but instead they're crazy it's like if they just did it some might be brilliant like i they just yeah or you can be smart in one way in certain yeah. ways yeah it's like those people who are really good at spewing facts but they're really bad at interpreting them mm. like ben right. shapiro is he good at spewing facts i hate that guy so much <laughs> i do want to pick up on something because we were mentioning uncertainty and there has been kind of an explosion in at least it seems like it in conspiracy theories in the past two years, like since COVID. And one of the theories for why that is, is that there's so much uncertainty in the world that people are kind of looking even more for some kind of explanation for some kind of certainty in things. So things like the QAnon, I mean, that was already out there, but it's gotten kind of more steam. The anti-vax stuff, which relies quite a bit on conspiracy theories. COVID itself as a conspiracy theory, the 5G, 5G. network. All of that stuff, like Bill Gates, Bill Gates. Yeah. The microchip in the vaccines. I mean, that one's real. I, I definitely saw it when I gave it to me, but no, I'm, yeah, I'm kidding. I just got my booster, actually. Yeah, Did you? I'm feeling it. Did you get chip? Yeah. How'd you get your boost? I want to get a booster. Healthcare worker. Oh, yeah. Right. right. You're like with people all the time. That makes perfect sense. First of all, it'd be great to get chipped, I think, because then, you know, access to the Internet all the time. That sounds great. But yeah. <laughs> you just think of something and it like Google yeah, searches. Isn't that great? Right? Is that how it works? I would love that. Yeah. Except for the fact that it's literally impossible to inject a chip in like a needle. They don't care. It just makes sense to somebody and they, yeah, they run cares. with it. It's like that type of thinking. You start with the end belief and then you work backwards to, mm. to justify it. I feel like that's also true of some religious thinking, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. It's there's a word for that, like a priori versus something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, as long as you said part of the word there, we'll know that you're smart. <laughs> no, don't. Please take it out because I <laughs> no, didn't no, no. say most of it. God damn it. I hate when Josh edits. <laughs> if you had known more conspiracy theories, you would have been a much better storyteller right there. I am instead of just <laughs> trying to be all it's, scientific. Yeah. It's yeah. true. That's my downfall, my lack of conspiratorial thinking. Terrible. I do think that it's funny. Like there are some that are just funny. Like, oh, they're going to track you with a like a thing that they put in your vaccine like guys they're tracking us all the time on our phones that we willingly hold with it like Mm -hmm. we who cares everybody knows everything about you just accept it and live your life okay i to ask google home for stuff all the time and she knows everything she knows everything that's going on she knows my name and then you get a bunch of ads right after Ah, that i don't care based on what you ask i don't give a shit get over it everybody we're gonna get a lot of like conspiracy ads after this podcast, we're like, holy shit, hey, we're listening. I listen to a lot of conspiracy theory stuff already, and I haven't gotten enough. I wish I got more. Do you really? You listen to a lot of conspiracy stuff already? Like stuff about conspiracy theories. There's this podcast called Conspirituality I started listening to like a month or two ago. It's interesting because it's like the crossover between wellness culture and like people who are kind of more prone to the spiritual yeah. side of things and conspiracy theories. And usually there's a lot of crossover. Like usually it's a lot of the same people who believe in those, yeah. um, which is interesting because you think, you know, you think about something like QAnon and you think, oh, it's like intense right wingers. But there's also like a lot of left. Like the, there's no 
conspiracy theories go all along the political spectrum. Like, oh, yeah, they're definitely at both ends. So there isn't, you know, any one group. No, it can be from very left, very right. It's not necessarily a political thing. By the way, can I just say, Daniel, I love podcasting with you because you will we're like sitting down in a like podcasting setups and you're just like walking around like you're talking on a FaceTime chat. He's a nomadic podcaster. <laughs> nomadic man. Yeah. Trying to keep you on silent yeah. to like get my girlfriend for dinner. Oh, <laughs> that's like so nice. Holding hostage in the kitchen because she doesn't want to come out and like disturb. Oh, oh. so sweet. I can sense her like, don't you dare come near me. Gotcha. <laughs> Well, that's nice. You know, <laughs> You're being not a in a bad way, just in a like, I'll meet like your friends my... at a different time. Yeah, I, I got that. I like it because we're so casually talking about conspiracy theories. It's got to really anger conspiracy theorists because it's not casual to them, right? Well, no. The time. It's extremely serious stuff. Don't you understand what they're trying to do with you with these vaccines? Yeah. Don't you understand? Well, they'll just dismiss us. Like, look at these people. They think they know what they're talking about, but like they're sheep. We're sheep. They're sheeple. We're sheeple. Oh, it's not just sheep. We're sheeple. We're sheeple. That's right. We're just following. By the way, I just want to point out a lot of these things are based in some truth or partial truth, right? Mm. Like I, I've had arguments with people who are very, you know, who are anti-vaccine, who have a lot of conspiratorial beliefs about big pharma. Mm. For the record, like big pharma is a thing, right? Like we have a in America, especially, right? We have this corporate pharmaceutical industry that rips people off to get life-saving drugs. They monopolize everything. They have this certain level of control. And that is, they obviously have a concerted effort in a sense to maintain that control and maintain these high prices and lobby the government in order to do that. Mm. If that's a conspiracy, okay, there's a conspiracy, I believe oh, in, right? It's it's <laughs> it's a conspiracy, but that's it's also capitalism. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's just like what that is. Capitalism is a conspiracy, right? It's a yeah. bad side effect. Yeah. But here's the thing that might be true, but people will take that and then run with it, right? Because now right. we don't trust these corporations. Of course, I don't trust them in that sense either. Just like the government. People don't trust the government when this stuff happens. But there's a fire truck now honking real loud. It's, all, it's always stuff coming in there. Oh, I can hear that. You can that hear it finally? Act, I actually believe you with that one. Not not with the ice cream truck that you lie oh about God. constantly. <laughs> oh, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you're kind of leading into the anti-vax stuff that's based on. So there is some truth to the big pharma being evil. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of truth to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So is big pharma kind of evil in that regard? Of course. Can the government be evil in that way too? Yes. But doesn't mean that they're coming up with like fake science. Not necessarily right the science the way science works and we've talked about this on you know the podcast before is it has to be like verified across many different sources it needs to be reliable meaning if somebody does you know an experiment in one place somebody else has to be able to do it somewhere else you know totally separate from them and get the same result and the more people you get getting the same result wherever they may be and you need a control as well to make a, sure it's yeah it has to be in a yeah there's a lot of specifics that yeah with the scientific method it's called yeah, people who don't understand the scientific method and how that works, it's very easy to believe like, oh, they're just lying to us. They use the big old conspiracy they. Mm. I always like to ask people specifically when they get into that, like, who's they? Can you just can you just explain to me who they is? The Jews. They're like, yeah, sometimes they like the Jews. Usually the Jews. You know, they is sometimes the government. Sometimes it's big pharma. But even so, those are just other words for they for a lot of people because they don't really understand how the pharmaceutical industry works or how the government works. Mm -hmm. Government, again, is also filled with a lot of really incompetent people who don't know how to coordinate things. Yeah, like, they fail like at the coordinating the most basic things. I know. Yeah. Coordinating this evil scheme for years and years with nobody mm -hmm. telling the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So in that way, do I believe that the government lies to us sometimes or that pharmaceutical industry is kind of evil? Yeah. But is the science about the vaccines wrong? No. When you understand how science works, they're actually able to make all this money because it works. Mm. What they're doing is exploiting and taking advantage of the situation and the fact that, you know, these scientists managed to create this thing. Yeah, it was funded by them. So they feel like they can do that. It's quite crazy how much of like with COVID, there's been a, a crossover between conspiracy and science. You know, usually like conspiracy was like, I guess, 9-11, you know, government plot, you know, aliens, moon, la well, moon landing, I guess, in science is kind of there. It's become more political in a way, don't you think? Political too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Nazis really loved their conspiracy theories too. Mm. Oh, did they? They loved them. Oh my God. They loved them. Yeah. They were into like the occult stuff and yeah. didn't, I, like, I love Wolfenstein. I'm like a big fan of, you know, the Wolfenstein games and the whole like Nazis, like, what is being into the occult? You never heard of Wolfenstein? What is Wolfenstein? No. 
Sorry. Can you explain it to me and our audience that may not know? <laughs> it's a game where you kill Nazis. You shoot Nazis. Oh. But usually the storyline in the game involves the Nazis trying to do occult type stuff. Mm. And you end up fighting like Nazi zombies and stuff too. Because in the games, it's real. It's like they actually found some stuff. But in real life, they were just searching for this shit. And it was just conspiracy theory. Speaking of, I mentioned before the protocols of the elders of Zion. Mm -hmm. And we can come back also to the vaccine stuff. I think we're going to be talking about that for a bit. But you guys have heard of this? Yeah. Well, didn't yeah. Henry Ford? Well, that's an example. So that's not scientific, right? Right. Like that's mm -hmm. political. Yeah. Right. That was just like, let's find a way to blame our problems on, on someone else. Right. On the Jews, uh, which has happened for a while, too. Yeah. Yeah. But people yeah. have been that was published, what, like 100 or 200 years ago, something like that. 1800s, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And Henry Ford was really into that. Right. Which is why you shouldn't buy Ford cars. Yes, <laughs> definitely. was. Yeah. And of course, Hitler mentions that in Mein Kampf, his uh, his best selling novel. It's a great read. Good bedtime. Read. Yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I mean, I used to work, as you guys may know, at a cafe. It was called LA Cafe. You know, I made friends with the people who worked there. And there was this one woman who she was like the most bubbly, cheerful person. And I might have even told you this before, Aya. She was so like I like I loved her. Like I got along great with her. She was always like a very happy, fun presence. Although I think she might have gotten fired for like drinking alcohol on the job, but maybe that's why she was so bubbly. <laughs> maybe that's why she was so bubbly. But she, I liked her kind of like in in talking to her and stuff. But she did believe that the Jews were behind like everything. And at the time, it was it's just so ridiculous to me that I just kind of found it funny mm -hmm. because there was such a disconnect to her that she could like talk to me and like me. And we could have this relationship with each other, like as coworkers. And then she believes like all the problems of the world are like the Jews. Did she not put together that you're Jewish? And <laughs> Well, I remember telling her that and she was trying to like get answers from me. And I'm like, <laughs> you're like I, why would I work here? Like, oh, yeah. She believed like the Holocaust wasn't real. Oh, it was one of those geez. Holocaust deniers. Well, Facebook told her now. Like and Holocaust denial, that's a conspiracy theory as well, right? Mm -hmm. Somehow there was a coordinated effort to not... It's not cover up, but to create this fake genocide against the people, which, again, is such insanity. We have so much historical evidence about this, you know, and yet people still find ways to believe and it. And so insulting to all of us. Like, oh, OK, I guess I just my family just magically disappeared. Oh, OK. I'm like, oh, yeah. Did my grandma lie to me? Oh, my God. She was a psychopath the whole time. It's like the Sandy Hook stuff. It's like, like a big yeah. wow factor yeah. when someone will gather around and I'm going to tell you about how the Holocaust was fake. You know, like, yeah. I would love to believe that the Holocaust is fake. Yeah, I would love that. that I wish great? that were true. Please. Yeah, Wouldn't that be nice? And you just brought up Sandy Hook. Well, yeah, like, that's another that one. Really upsetting. Yeah. They just won the court case, by the way. Good. Like Alex Jones. You guys heard about this? Mm -hmm. Alex Jones was a big proponent of this Sandy Hook conspiracy. He believed that the kids that were massacred in this school shooting, it wasn't real. They were all paid actors that tore the families up. Well, they're like people were harassing these families and telling them, like, why are you lying? Yeah, it's because like, of that. These families just had their toddlers killed. Like, are you insane? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, so, Aya, you said that you listened to a conspiracy podcast yeah. for about a year now. I've been listening to a conspiracy podcast too. And it's, oh, which one? It's called Knowledge Fight. It's these two guys oh. who um, talk about Alex Jones basically all the time. Oh, nice. I'm going to write that down. Alex Jones is such a character. Like, because he still broadcasts and he has been for a very, like, since like the late 90s mm. and so it's these two guys one does like all the research and fact checks like every single thing that he says <laughs> and like they're stand-up comedians too so like oh perfect they're both oh, very perfect. funny i'm definitely listening at this point that. like it's a huge guilty pleasure for me to listen to him because it's like <laughs> oh my god i listen to way too much alex jones like it's them <laughs> shitting on him and like trust me it's entertainingly it's enter dumb, it's a guilty right? yeah big says. time it's like big... what's the stuff about the frogs that he says he said something about yeah so that whole thing was you know they're putting fluoride in the water i think and, and turning the frogs gay and like what do you think it's to you <laughs> the thing like with him it's like he's a big grifter right so like he's all about selling his supplemental his supplements exactly you know like mm -hmm. that's like what keeps him going and he probably has like a decent amount of people that follow him that do support him yeah and info wars oh my god it's funny because they'll check in to his daily thing and then they'll also check so a lot of the right-wing assholes like to say that you know alex jones has been right about a lot of things oh my god. so they actually do like podcasts from like the time machine like they'll go into like 2003 and like check in on him there and like see what kind of bullshit he was spewing there oh, nice. so much of it is just a big grift you know, that that's just keeping him going. And yeah. of course, he has a huge personality disorder. Yeah. At least one. Funny enough, his dad was a dentist. Oh. Oh, so you can relate. So there's yeah. a pattern. Yeah. 
<laughs> There's a pattern there, yeah. 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 <laughs> but again, I think that is where it starts to get really dangerous. You know, we've talked about a few that are dangerous now. Oh, with him, it's dangerous, big time. Yeah, yeah, because people believe it, even if he himself doesn't. By the way, like he, it sounds like he's just trying to sell his shit, which he sells like ridiculous stuff, if I recall. Like he basically sells like things that help you super male vitality. Oh no. Yeah, <laughs> super male vitality. Have you guys tried it? Is it any good? <laughs> All the time, all the time. How do you think? Where I get all my vitality, Aya. Yeah. Okay. But it's dangerous. I mean, look, again, the Sandy Hook thing, they sued him and they just won. So they're going to get like money for that, right? Which they deserve. Imagine somebody comes up to you after your kid was shot at school and said, you big liar, tell everybody the truth. That happened to, um, was it Buzz Aldrin? Somebody who believed that the moon landing was fake. And he punched him in the face. He told him, you're a liar and a coward. And Buzz Aldrin punched him in the <laughs> face. <laughs> and he was 72 years old or something when he did that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, it's wow factor, you know, like Sandy Hook is like such a tragedy and you're turning into like, you know, the government's lying to you about it, you know. A lot of the conspiracy theorists these days like to talk about false flags. Hmm. So oh. like, oh, Sandy Hook was a false flag operation, you know, by the- What is uh, that? I don't know. A false flag is like when the government does it themselves you know to make to throw oh, everybody okay. into a panic so gotcha. the anti-gun people did sandy hook so that we would talk about gun control oh you know jesus yeah the vegas shooting also people think was a false like so it also like kind of stokes the flames oh january 6th was a false flag made up by the government you know to scare mm-hmm. everybody and make it more of a police state you know mm-hmm. same with 9 11 everybody so. stormed the capital yeah yeah exactly yeah january 6th, yeah i mean i knew people at the time who believed these conspiracies who would tell me here yeah, maybe some of them have backed down a little bit from that now but at the time people really were like i don't i don't believe it you know again when they had such a belief and this is where it got political right there was the donald trump conspiracy stuff because he backed he was a conspiracy theorist himself big time birthers the right? birther movement yeah i feel like he was one of the first president conspiracy theorists like Somebody who became the leader of the world, but he he suddenly had access to all the information, but he still believed all this shit. <laughs> it was so, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, this also kind of leads to the QAnon stuff, right? How much do you guys know about the QAnon beliefs? Quite a bit. I know a little. I listened to a podcast on it too. Nice. Yeah. Oh my God, can you please share the basic tenets of the QAnon belief stuff? Because we have Congress members now, right? Was that woman, is it Marjorie Taylor Greene? Yeah. Oh, she's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but she's in a position of power Mm -hmm. in government. Like this is not just people on the fringe anymore. These are people who believe this crazy stuff. And that that's where I think also becomes really dangerous. Yeah. But like, Daniel, can you tell us what this QAnon thing is all about? (laughs) My basic understanding is that, you know, there's this big global cabal who used to be the Jews, but now it's just the globalists. They've shifted a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, but like- The Jews can join. If you get knee deep into it, it's like, (laughs) it ends up going back to the Jews. (laughs) Oh, okay. Or the Democrats who are also Jewish. We're also Jewish. Um, (laughs) And they're a bunch of pedophiles and uh, they're running the world. And basically QAnon is this guy who's high up in in the government or was. Well, his name's Q. They call him Q, right? Q, yeah. In the Trump administration, who's like totally on board with Trump and knows that Trump is like the messiah who's going to take down this whole, he's going to expose it all, you know, with the storm (laughs) and they're going to arrest all of these, uh, you know, so it's like a wet dream for them. Oh my God. That Trump's going to come in on uh, as a knight in shining armor and shut it all down and you know, every time that a big event happens, like January 6th, it's like, okay, the storm is coming for January 6th, you know, and then it doesn't happen. And then, okay, inauguration, it's going to happen. Uh, it doesn't happen. It's just and- like those people who believe the world's going to end at a certain date. And then when it doesn't, they just shift the date. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. keep moving the goalposts. Moving it doesn't goalposts. stop them from believing. Yeah. They just believe harder for some reason. Yeah. Well, you got to double down. Yeah. Double, triple. Now, one of the funny things, too, about the whole QAnon thing is that they were spreading these Q drops. So when Q said, as something's going to happen, you know, on 4chan and then 8chan right. and then like 8kun, I think was the name of it. And like, these are all like child pedophilia websites, like that <laughs> websites that have a lot of it, you know? So like the irony oh is God. not lost. It's like the dark web, right? Is that not what the dark web is? Yeah, oh. you can't like get onto that stuff now, like just through your regular. I used to be able to get on a 4chan, but that's been... So who do you think is really spread? Is there just some... Like... There is a guy. They know his name is Jim Watkins. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, look it up. I was thinking like, is there some kid in his basement just 
trolling everybody. <laughs> you it's, know, he's a real, he's a piece of work. Yeah. No, they found out who it is. They're quite sure who is doing oh, it. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. So people still believe this hardcore and they're in our government now. And again, yeah. it's dangerous. Or they're just using it like conveniently. Or also a lot of evangelicals are in on that stuff, actually, which is it's so strange. Evangelical stuff is also very scary to me. And I think that's also kind of, I mean, their belief system is pretty conspiratorial, right? Yeah. And there's also that belief of like the rapture happening at certain points and all that yeah. stuff. Again, the religious belief. And again, like the whole Christianity being like very American centric. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're crossing over between conspiracy and religion. Mm-hmm. It's a kind of a thin line. At yeah. Times. Alex Jones spins that line too a lot. Mm-hmm. He'll like sound like a preacher sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I'm amazed how they can manage to kind of bring all those things together sometimes, like you know, those conspiracy theories like QAnon and religion and guns for some reason for some reason the gun thing becomes part of it and it becomes religious like if you're a good christian then you also like have an ar-15 yeah <laughs> like i don't understand like it becomes a an identity i think and the constitution is like the bible too yeah except they don't even know the constitution no <laughs> they don't really know the constitution doesn't matter they read some cliff notes of the constitution and they think they know the constitution right to bear arms right? yeah That's all you gotta know <laughs> my god-given right Man. yeah there it is what are some of the other uh conspiracies on there moon landing yeah moon landing yeah we brought up the moon landing but yeah that one is well some people believe that the moon is actually especially if you're a flat earther they believe that the moon is a projection mm. well again these are all easily disprovable i always love the people who believe in the flat earth thing like they always say things that contradict themselves and don't realize it mm-hmm. like i don't know if you guys have seen that famous line where they say like the flat earth society has members all across the globe I like that. <laughs> That's funny. Globe? You sure you you see it as a globe? <laughs> you guys know what a globe looks like, right? Yeah. What would they call it? All across the? They could say the map. They could say something else. Oh, they could, funny. but they but they're stupid. They they don't even realize how how dumb it is. I have another one. Yeah. And it's actually funny because this actually just came up in a conversation I was having. Because someone's like, "What do you know about the Beatles?" And I was like, "I know that some people think that Paul McCartney is dead." <laughs> oh yeah. And the way that I was introduced to that was also very strange. So I went to this Jewish summer camp. It's a very socialist Jewish summer camp where I don't know if that has to do with anything, but another one of our classmates went there too, Sarah Fisher. And one of the activities this one day, like, you know, you have like these activities. It's like today you can go like for free activity. You get to pick something that one of the counselors runs. So like one of them is painting. One of them is swimming. One of them is singing. One of them is Paul is dead. And I was like, what's Paul is dead? And this one counselor was like, just go to it. You, you got to go to this. So I was like, all right. And I went to this and we're all sitting in a cabin and he plays a tape, like old school, just like little tapey tape. And we just listened to this guy explaining how Paul McCartney is dead and how this has been a cover up, a cover up where the band is also leaving clues for the fans so that like people who are really paying attention (laughs) can tell that Paul is dead. And this is after John Lennon was killed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was this whole (laughs) thing about like how there was this all the usual conspiracy theory type things like there was a lookalike contest and then the guy who won or who got second place in the lookalike contest mysteriously disappeared the exact time that Paul might have died in this other thing and oh my god and on one of the album covers like he's not wearing shoes but the other ones are and that probably means something and it's like love it it's so creative it, it's fascinating paul mccartney himself has heard of this by the way of course I think he's responded he's probably to like he's like i am alive <laughs> I learned I was dead. Yeah. It was news to me. News, yeah, I remember coming to class, like this was still in elementary school and our mutual friend, Amanda Bell, was really into the Beatles. And I was like, oh, did you know that Paul is dead? And she was like, no, he isn't. <laughs> and she explained why he isn't. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't know. I just listened. Oh, you actually- I believed oh, it. Oh, you believed it yourself. I listened to a tape in a cabin. I didn't know. I was oh. I was just like, oh, okay, I guess Paul is dead. Like this counselor played this for us. I, I mean, I believed it for a few months. Yeah, why wouldn't I? You know what? <laughs> it, I think when we're kids, it is easier also to- of course, yeah. Taking some of this, I mean, if I'm being totally honest with myself, there might have been like a second where I was reading some of that stuff my brother was, and I thought that maybe some of this 9-11 or Zeitgeist conspiracy stuff was real. Oh, yeah, it sucks you in, for sure. I mean, it took like two seconds. It takes two yeah. seconds of like critical thinking and research to realize it's not. It's attractive also. It's fun to believe. It's like, very attractive. Oh, there's this hidden thing. and like Yeah, it's like putting together a puzzle. Exactly, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I felt that attraction to it. And as a kid, I was like, wow, yeah. wow, I'm learning something that most people don't know for some reason. You guys know the JFK, you know how JFK was assassinated. 
there's like a whole conspiracy theory behind that as well, right? People don't believe it was, was it Oswald or whatever it was? Lee Harvey Oswald. Lee Harvey Oswald, sorry. Whenever I don't know something about like American stuff, I just tell everybody I'm Canadian. I don't know. <laughs> I'm Canadian too. <laughs> Why did I know? <laughs> I know. I know. But you know history. No, I don't. So. Don't. No. Yeah, you do. You're the smart, you're the PhD person. Please don't say that. I've gotten. You're a doctor. All right. I'm not going to argue with you. You're both doctors, right? We are both doctors. Yes. Oh my God. Dr. Botner and Dr. Ishai. Yeah, Josh. I'm in the presence of such smart people right now. You're way out of your league right now. (laughs) So I can't remember where I read this or saw this, but part of um, conspiratorial thinking is that when there's a big event that needs explaining, people kind of feel like it needs a big explanation. Hmm. For example, if the president was assassinated, just like some crazy person shot him isn't like enough for a lot of people. So unsatisfying. Not satisfying of an answer. No. So they need it to be a much, it's such a big thing that happened. It needs a much bigger, or the Princess Diana, mm-hmm. she just died in a car crash? No, no, it's not. A, it's a big event. It needs a big explanation. Yeah. It couldn't be something mundane that could happen to anybody. But then you can break this down really easily, right? Because if it's a small event, people don't require it to have that big an explanation. So for example, JFK was shot and killed, right? But Ronald Reagan, he was also shot, but he wasn't killed. Well, because the president was only shot and he wasn't killed, it's okay that people just believe, there's no conspiracies about that. Mm. There's no conspiracies about anyone shooting Ronald Reagan because he survived. But if Ronald Reagan were to have died, you could bet that there would have been tons of conspiracies about that, right? Speaking of the bigger the event... You know what has a lot of conspiracies about it is the Titanic. Oh, yeah. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a lot of books written on that one. Oh, interesting. What are the like, I heard about that for the first time today. I actually didn't. I had never heard of any Titanic conspiracies, but you're right. It's a big thing. So, of course, there are some conspiracy theories about it, right? Yeah. And just like, you know, it was the first of its kind sort of thing. And there's a lot of really rich, important people kind of on that ship. And the way that it goes down is like not a good enough explanation i got it hitting an iceberg isn't isn't yeah like the globalist jewish pedophiles had to take that shit down you know so like tell us how that happened (laughs) tell us what we want to hear so again like 1500 people died or something there like people were saying this at the time it would have been like it's not like denying the holocaust it's millions and millions but it's a horrible thing to say and do if you're not right if you're just like spouting i don't believe it's true like real people died a lot of these people who believe things, they are often in for a rude awakening when suddenly the stuff they believe is right in front of them and it's real. Mm-hmm. If someone believed the Sandy Hook thing, but then they went and talked to one of those parents, they might change their tune. Some people won't. Some people will. And I think that leads to the end of the question. Are there certain people that are more likely to believe in conspiracy theories and why? Like, what's Why are people falling for it and what can take them out of it? I think a big thing is like sense of purpose, like it gives you a sense of purpose. So if you're, it's like filling up a hole kind of. Mm -hmm. Finding that answer, that unknown. Yeah. And maybe you have like a hard time expressing yourself or absorbing just how the world is. So it it gives you a reconciliation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you kind of mentioned that before, Josh, but. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. It's probably why we're so prone to it. For me, when I don't know the answer to something, I'm okay with saying, I don't know. Lots of people are not. I can tell you what I don't think something is because you can use your critical thinking skill to kind of figure stuff out, right? Or figure out what something isn't. But if you don't know what it is, it's important to just be like, I don't know. I I don't have the answer. I'm sure if I do some research, maybe we can find out. Maybe we can find out what the likely answer is. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of these people, one, they don't understand statistics and how that works. They don't understand the scientific method. They don't know how to correctly use their critical thinking skills. It's a combination. Yeah. And they don't understand that it's okay to not have an answer. Yeah, There's a lot of people out there where they have an answer and they're going to stick with that answer until you give them a better answer. Mm. You need to have or more sensational answer <laughs> <laughs> or more sensation. Yeah. But I mean, they have an answer and they're not going to budge away from their incorrect answer until you replace it with an answer. You can't replace it with I don't know. They're like, well, then who is it? And you're like, well, we don't know. They're like, well, I do. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know? End of conversation. You just lost. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Because they have an answer now. It's hard because how do you get people to like, I definitely empathize with that feeling of like wanting an answer. But how do you get through to people who aren't okay with uncertainty or aren't okay with I don't know fear? Yeah. How can you deal with it? It all comes from fear. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you deal with that? I mean, even like with the COVID stuff, like you've got people dying of COVID who are like, please, I really regret not taking the vaccine. Please take it. And the people who were on that side of the fence are just gonna be like, this is clearly part of the conspiracy. And they're not gonna like, 
it doesn't matter. I don't know if that's a good example, but like you can have someone who is in the exact situation. It's kind of like the worst case scenario for the people who are anti-vaxxers is like ending up in a hospital dying of COVID. And there are people saying like, that's what's happening to me. I really didn't believe in this. And now this is happening to me. Please like vaccinate yourself. And the people who could learn from that refuse to, you know, I always say it's good to learn from your mistakes but it's even better to learn from other people's mistakes. Mm. <laughs> you know, obviously it, some people do change their minds when they, I sometimes relate this to kind of political thinking. I think it's sometimes conservative versus liberal, but that's not necessarily the case where conservative thinking is if it happens to me, then I care about it and it's real. But if it doesn't happen to me, then I don't. <laughs> They'll go with the more comfortable belief. Gosh, why are you shitting on conservatives so much? Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I'm like a hardcore right winger, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're so hardcore. I'm just saying it seems to me to be a more conservative belief. No, to, I got you. Sorry. Kind of like Dick Cheney, or as conservative as he is, was like really pro gay marriage. Why? Because his daughter was gay. Mm. It's like as soon as it affects you, yeah. then it matters. Although he could have still not been pro gay married like he could have still been an asshole about it like just because his kid is gay doesn't mean he automatically accepts it you know what i mean like it doesn't mean he does but i'm saying it, it happens that right in that case yeah people are more likely to care or empathize when it affects them directly i think that's for all people in general i don't know that maybe it is more likely i don't know why i'm defending conservatives i don't know what I, like it <laughs> could definitely be more likely with conservatives but i think in general most of us have a hard time really relating to something unless it has affected us yes you know but that's why we have to practice our empathy. And I think that, of course, is also related to conspiratorial thinking in this regard. To me, it's like you have to have empathy for the group, even though it's not happening to you, you know? Mm. So like abortion doesn't really affect me. It might in the future, but like, I still think that people should have their, yeah. yeah. you know? Yeah. So the people who have these sorts of beliefs, oftentimes it has to affect them first for them to change. Right. Mm. But then there's still people out there. I saw videos of people dying of COVID in the hospital. And they still refuse. Right. There's been people, one, they refuse to believe they even had COVID because COVID didn't exist. It wasn't COVID. It was just the flu. And it's like, you're dying of this right now. Yeah. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. They would say until they were dead. Well, you got to double down. Where are you seeing these videos, man? This is gold. Yeah, <laughs> you haven't seen this? There are videos of this. I was reading this tragic story the other day about this woman who um, she lost her father and her brother to COVID. The brother kept the father from getting the vaccine and getting treatment. And then they both went to the hospital and she's like tweeting about this or, or whatever as it's happening. Then her father died and she's like frustrated with her brother. And she's like, he gets to walk out of the hospital. Apparently he's fine now. And then she tweets later. Actually, no, he just died. He walked out. He wasn't even supposed to. He wasn't <laughs> like he didn't. He still didn't believe it. He didn't trust. It's possible to not trust something, to have questions and not like have black and white thinking and say it's all wrong yeah. or all right. Yeah. And I think that nuanced thinking is lost on conspiratorial thinkers. I think it's also important not to underestimate how much people want to be right and how much they refuse to admit they're wrong. It's like yeah. sometimes if you've insisted on something so hard, like so intensely, how can you backtrack after that? Like, Yeah, that's really hard for people. That brother that you're talking about, for him to backtrack would be to admit that he is essentially at fault for his father's death. Yeah. And his own. I mean, that's exactly that's not easy to do. I have a friend who just moved to another country to avoid the vaccine mandates in Canada. He moved to another country. Once you've gone that far, I feel like it's really hard to pull back, right? If you moved your entire life somewhere mm -hmm. for this reason. What if you turned out you were wrong? Now, it's not the only reason. And I should mention that this friend, you know, I have a lot of empathy also for people who have these beliefs. And I think it's important to say this because let's say you do have this belief and you, you're, I think you're wrong, your belief about vaccines and all that stuff. I think you're wrong, but you do think it, you do believe it. And because you believe it, now you're in a situation where you feel everybody's against you. And nobody believes you and no one listens to you. And you just want control of your own body and all this stuff. From that point of view, that is really, really difficult. And that does lead to, as it did in my friend's case, major depression, suicidal thoughts. First, I just wanted to argue all these points, you know, and I wanted to be like, oh my God, you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> this is dangerous thinking. It's affecting other people, how you're thinking. And then I was listening to him talk about this and I realized it's not, what matters first is you know, your mental health in this case, right? Maybe it's a good thing he did get away for his mental health at the very least. It wasn't important right away to convince him because 
remember some of this stuff is mental health issues too. Yeah. But sometimes people are using mental health as an issue. Like the kind of people who would never use it as an issue before, like my kids need to go back to school for their mental health. It's like, all right, mental health wasn't even a thing for you before. It's just useful now. So you're using it. Like, well, those people might be using mental health. I know that's different than what you're talking about, but I just want to. But some people, their own mental health, I'll say this is not even the only friend. I I have a few friends who believe a lot of stuff I don't agree with about vaccines and such. And they've been very depressed Mm. during this time. And as much as I disagree with them, I don't want my friends to be depressed or suicidal. They're still my friends and I love them and I'm not going to, you know, it gets really, really difficult when people have beliefs that we disagree so much on about, but at the heart of it, you're like, but they're a good person, yeah, right? It is hard to, I mean, I have friends and patients too, you know, and it's like, you can't just like cut off yeah. your relationship with them just because they've gone down a bad path, you know, so yeah. hopefully it's just not harming you. It's called the sunk cost fallacy, by the way, with the, the, the term you're Oh. saying yeah it's like an economics and like psychology oh. uh, term. Mm, like once you've invested this much in something you can't you've invested so much in it that yeah. you can't give it up it's some yeah. cost fallacy yeah it's like why people stay in relationships way too long sometimes oh well i've yeah, already exactly. been in it for two years i should probably keep going <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> life outside of this is the... you don't understand my cds are still in this truck <laughs> Right. <laughs> I can't just leave. <laughs> I think I might have brought this up before I had too, but I, I knew this girl. I would just, at first it was just almost friendly. Like we would chat about vaccine stuff. She was very anti-vax. I would chat with her on Instagram about it. She was an actress friend of mine. And then it, she got so upset after a while because she fell so far down this rabbit hole. She said, Josh, you are vaccine shedding. She said, you are shedding the vaccine. You guys heard about this? No. Yeah. That's taken from the whole like virus shedding. Yes. So, well, she says you're shedding from this vaccine, even though it doesn't use part of a live virus. It's still somehow you're shedding spike protein, The spike protein. You're shedding spike protein everywhere. And she told me, she said, I was around two or three people who just got vaccinated on set. And I felt ill within like half an hour. Oh, geez. And I had to leave because I was getting sick. I was getting sick. And she's like, Josh, you are killing people. By getting vaccinated and being around them, you are killing wow, people. Wow, they she got so upset. completely flipped got, the whole narrative. That's insane. And I think in the past, and she, it might even be true, she it might have been built off the fact that she might actually have had a vaccine injury herself in the past. Those do happen. It's rare, but it can happen, right? Some people have immune response problems. And I think that's where it might have built off from for her, from a, a past uh, event like that. So this girl, she quit Instagram. She like quit social media. Like I'm not friends with her. I haven't heard from her since. I think she couldn't take it anymore. It's caused a lot of divides Mm -hmm. and and put a lot of wedges in between people. So I will say that even if I heavily disagree with you on some of this stuff, even if it's conspiracy type thinking, I mean, I was friends with that girl who a lot of people don't agree with me, who like was like a Holocaust denier. Oh my God. I wasn't like good friends with her, but I mean, I feel like you have to be friends with her to like keep her not hating Jews. Like if you, if you were like, I hate you now, then she'll just be like, well, of course you do. And then that'll just like reinforce her crazy beliefs. Although it doesn't sound like you were really disproving her beliefs, but it's fine. You probably helped a little. I worked to disprove her beliefs, but also sometimes you just got to be that Jewish friend that makes people question their anti-Semitism. But it's like how many Jewish people she probably hanging out with before? Like who? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) No, (laughs) I don't know. I do think it's important to, because again, if you let people simmer in their own bubbles Mm. and that goes for any of us, that can be bad. Are we not doing that right now? We're just agreeing with each other. In this little bubble, we are. But like I've told you, I think it's really important to have friends on all ends of the political spectrum. We got to bring on an anti-vaxxer next time. Bring on a, We'll bring on the craziest conspiracy person. We were hoping <laughs> you, that was you, Daniel, but apparently it's not. Yeah. Josh was like, yeah, Dan. I like it for you. I could have given you the counterpoints if you wanted. <laughs> we'll do that next time. <laughs> No, I know, Dan, thanks. But for all you know, we did have someone on or people on who are we don't we haven't questioned everybody about their beliefs. And I just want to say that if we disagree, I'd love to have a respectful debate about it. But I still love you. That's a great that's a great way to wrap things up, right? Pedophile. (laughs) (laughs) Globalist. Yeah. (laughs) Pizzagate anyone? Don't bring your shadow cabal here. I, I don't know. Thanks for listening. This has been another episode of Adulthood Friends. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe, like us on Facebook and wherever you like to listen, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Overcast. 
and anywhere you'd like to listen. I don't know. We're in a lot of places. Uh, Dan made an improving face, so I felt like I needed to respond to it. Yeah, you, you guys need a Patreon account now. <laughs> yeah, I would feel very weird asking people for money for what we do here. Yeah, or we could just put ads on this podcast. It's a thing on Anchor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but it's like, do we want to? The, the people who are listening already. Do we want to burden you with ads? Super male like- vitality, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We've just been <laughs> slipping our ads in. Like we had the one for McDonald's yeah. fries earlier. Yeah, the McDonald's, yeah. the McDonald's ad. <laughs> big pharma. You guys are big proponents yeah. of big pharma. We oh, are yeah, big, big proponents. Big shills oh, yeah, for huge. them. Yeah. For sure. For sure we are. Can I say, Daniel, it's been so awesome having it you has. on again. Thanks again and for coming. You're so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We immediately thought of you for this topic. Like it's been good talking about, you know, serious other like personal topics of us growing up and everything. But I think this is the first time we've had a guest on to just talk about a like a world issue topic and that's not... true. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Yeah. Like just a fun, light one. Well, I don't know if conspiracy theories are fun and light, but they kind of <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, last time you and I was we all talked about growth and self-awareness which was, I think, also still fun and light. But we were still dealing with like more kind of personal stuff. But I think it's impossible not to have a fun, light conversation with you. So thanks, guys. You you guys make it easy. Oh, Oh. yeah. It was nice to see you again. I want to see your plant wall in real life one day. Yeah, it was really cool. (laughs) Hiya, uh, let's do up till. Yeah, I would go. love that. That place is fun. I am now jealous that I'm not in the same city as you guys to hang out. Yeah, well, you should be. Well, Daniel, you should come over again to uh, LA. Oh. <laughs> Josh, just move here. What do you even have in LA? There's nothing there. I've asked Aya, but she just never comes. So, I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, it it has been a pandemic for the last two years. In my defense. Yeah, I keep using that excuse. I will. That's not real. Oh, I will. <laughs> There's no such thing as a, you mean the pandemic? Okay. Oh, yeah, we didn't even mention that before. There you go. I threw yeah. it in there. I'm glad you got to slip that in there. Yeah. It's all planned. It's all part of the great reset. Yeah. Sure is. <laughs> I like how we're just saying the things, but we're not explaining <laughs> them. So really, we're actually just speaking to the people are going to think, oh my God, like Illuminati, they're all. Well, we're actually just divulging all of the elders of Zion's secrets right now. <laughs> we weren't supposed to. Do you think we'll get in trouble for this? I'll see you guys at the meeting anyways next week when we uh, yeah, yeah. have our little. Absolutely, guys. You guys know where that is. Yeah. Well, there's a triangle. For I had some trouble getting so dark underground last time. Do you guys know? Like, Do you have a faster way? Just follow the stars of David. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, that's what those were. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. The stars of David heads, and, you know, and the horns. Okay. And menorahs along the gotcha, way. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Right. The, the ones that are on fire, right? The, like the. Yes. Right. Oh, okay. it's lots of hellfire. Yeah. Lots of hellfire. <laughs> Great. Well, that seems like a good place to stop. Uh, how do we end this thing? Wait, what is Pizzagate again? Can you just Josh, tell me what Pizzagate is? He has real to quick? go. I know, but I want to know. Um, it's a global. It's where all the Democratic leaders of Hillary's team was meeting. All oh, right. All oh, right. This is related to QAnon. Yeah. They were meeting in John Podesta, yeah. who was her campaign manager. Uh-huh. His emails were leaked in the Hillary emails leaks. Mm-hmm. And he said like, ooh, I really like getting pizza from this place. Because <laughs> that's like where the campaign, it's like something like that. And then it was like, this is where they're hiding the kids. Mm, sure is. In the basement of this pizza. Place. Oh, my God. Oh, that ice cream truck is back. Really? I I can't hear it. Oh, good. I think this is a conspiracy theory that you've cooked up. <laughs>